Judges chapter 16. Then went Samson to Gaza, and saw there a harlot, and went in unto her. Numbers 6, 8. Numbers chapter 6, verse 8. Remember, he was a Nazarite. And number 6, 8 says, All the days of his separation, he, should, he is holy unto the Lord. And then we go to 1 Corinthians 6, 16. 1 Corinthians 6, 16. In the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 6, 16, what? Question. Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. And he joins himself to a harlot. Nazarite. Being used of God, the Holy Spirit working with him. In verse 2, and it was told the Gazites, saying, Samson is come hither. And they compassed him in, and laid wait for him all night in the gate of the city. Looks like there's only one gate. And were quiet all the night, saying, In the morning, when it is day, we shall kill him. He's already killed the Philistines, a thousand of them. He's an enemy. They're an enemy. It's almost like Paul. They lay wait for Paul and they let him down in a basket. And Samson lay till midnight and arose at midnight. So they didn't wait the morning. And took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts. And went away with them, bar and all, and put them upon his soldiers and carried them up to the top of a hill that's before Heber. 40 miles away. They're waiting at that gate for him all night. They're asleep. And he walks up and just grabs that entire gate, which is no small task. And walks off 40 miles of the gates. This guy is strong in the Lord. Literally. And it came to pass afterward. That he loved a woman in the valley of Sark, whose name was Delilah. Now, come back over to 14. In 14, the first woman, he says, verse 2 at the end of the verse, Now therefore get her for me to wife. And in verse 3 at the end of the verse, Get her for me, for she pleases me well. Now he finally mentions love. He's with a harlot. There's no love. Now love. In the land of Philistines. And this has been a, a story and a movie of Samson and Delilah. Well, I guess the people who made the movies are without sin can throw the first rock, I guess. Now here we go. Now it just gets interesting from here. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Delilah, entice him. Entice him. Chapter 14, verse 15. Satan has got Samson marked. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they said unto Samson's wife, Entice thy husband. Samson's weakness is the lust of the flesh in women. His entire life. And nothing changes. Satan does not have to tempt Samson with, with booze. That, that's not his problem. He doesn't have to tempt them with drugs if they had drugs back then. It's not his problem. Gambling was not Samson's problem. He had a problem with the women. So verse 5, entice him and see wherein his great strength lieth. And by what means we may prevail against him. They're plotting to kill him. And they're going to use his girlfriend. 
that we may bind him, put him in cuffs, lock him up, rope him, tie him up, to afflict him. Afflict is to cause bodily harm. And just not harm, I mean, it's, it, it, it's torture. And we will give thee, Delilah, every one of us, 1100, 11 pieces of silver. 1,100 pieces of silver. Now, there are five lords of the Philistines, so it would be $5,500. Or, dollars, excuse me. 550, 500, forgive me. 5,500 pieces of silver given to her by each of them. If they will find out by Delilah what we can do to conquer Samson. He's already been conquered by the devil. And Delilah said to Samson, and there's no even, verse 5, there's no even, you know, thinking about, it, oh, maybe I shouldn't, I really, not, verse 6, and Delilah said to Samson, tell me, I pray thee, where in that great strength lies? So look, she does. She don't love him. She's gonna sell him out like Judas for silver. But she got more money than Judas did. Where in that great strength lieth? And Samson's gonna be a fool too. Wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee? Look at that. She told him why. Thou mightest be bound and afflicted. Now I don't want to get gross or anything like that, but looking at Samson and his and his riddles and his women and all that, I think he's thinking about bondage. I think he's looking at oh right, hey, let's go. Because why would he oh, maybe you want to bound me to afflict me? Really? Adios. And Samson said unto her, he's gonna start playing games with her now. You don't even say even you, he says they. What? In that next verse, he says they. Yeah, but she said, where thou mayest be bound to afflict thee. He, she doesn't say anybody, she doesn't want to be afflicted. And Samson said, if they, now who are the they? <laughs> he knows something. Yet love blinded him, like Solomon. She is a non-Jewish woman that God forbid it in the law to have anything to do with. Never mind Mary. I'm not saying they got married, but still, he has no business being with his woman. If they buy me with seven green whips that were never dry, it's a little lesser than a rope, then shall I be weak and be as another man. All right. Then the lords of the Philistines brought up her seven green whips, which had not been dried. She whistles over to the men, hey, get me the seven green whips. And they gave it to her, and she bound him with them. She bound him. Now there were men lying in wait. <laughs> Abiding with her in the chamber, in her bedroom, there are men waiting to get Samson, who Samson loves her. And she ties him up, and she said unto him, Still seems to be upon thee, Samson. And he break the whips as a thread. Thread is an interesting thing in the Bible. It saved Rahab, the harlot, the red thread. Of toe is be as a thread of toe is broken when it touches the fire. Morning. So he, his strength was not known. Fool me once. And Delilah said to Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mayest be, mightest be bound. Uh, why don't you be like, why do you want to know this? Who were those guys in the bedroom? 
Who'd you try to... What, what's going on here? Quite opposite. He said unto her, If they bind me fast with new ropes that never were occupied, then I shall be weak and be as another man. Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith, and said unto the Philistines, Be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars in the wait, abiding in the chamber, same thing. And he break them off his arms like a thread. There's that thread in interesting again. Fool me twice. Fool me once, shame, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. You would think he would got the point by now, wouldn't you? Verse 13. And Delilah said unto Samson, Here too thou hast mocked me. Now that mocking there, you mocked me. Let's look at Matthew 2.16. Problem with Matthew 2.16 from some people. I don't have a problem with it, but some people do. Matthew 2.16. It's the word mocking we're looking at. Now, mocking you would say, Yeah, 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 And people seem to forget that words sometimes have one, two, three, or four meanings, like the word post. So, Matthew 2 16. Then Harry, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men. Now, that wasn't the wise men singing their noses at him saying, yeah, 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 yeah. And like it was over here, thou hast mocked me. What is that mock? You lied to me. Lying could be considered mocking. They, he told those wise men, come back and tell me where that baby is. And they did. They went another way. She wants Samson to keep telling her, well, where is your strength? And he has not told her the truth. He's been playing riddles. So that's a good word for the mock. Mock has two meanings. Verse 13, Delilah said to Santa, Hitherto thou hast mocked me, and told me lies. There you go. Tell me wherewith thou mayest be bound. Three times. And he said unto her, if thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web. He went from a little strings of a thread, a ro uh, the whips. He's at a rope now. Now he's getting to where, this, where it really is. He's talking about his hair. He's giving in. He hasn't completely told her, but we're getting there. And she fastened it with a pin and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. You would think he had enough of that already. And being, and he wake, awake out of, out of his sleep. He's asleep. He's asleep during this whole chapter. Spiritually. And went away with the pin of the beam. That's the first time that word shows up. And with the web. Fool me three times. Notice how the word pin and web shows up in this word. I don't know. It's just weird internet words there. Verse 15. And she said unto him. How can thou say I love thee? Samson, have you got it yet? Chapter 14, verse 15. I think God is, is putting the words in, in Delilah's mouth to help. 14, 15. It came to pass on the seventh day that they said unto Samson's wife, Entice thy husband, that he may declare unto us the riddle. Least we burn thee in thy father's house with fire. And he called us to take that. Have he called us to take that we have? And it was so. 
And Santa's wife wept before him and said, Thou dost but hate me and lovest me not. Back to Delilah. Verse 15. And she said, How canst thou say I love thee? The Holy Spirit recorded to us that he did love her. When thy heart is not right with me. Uh, excuse me, who's got the wrong heart here? Who wants who dead? Who is trying to do the affliction? I know whose heart is wrong, and it ain't Samson's, but thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherewith thy great strength lieth. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words. Chapter 14, verse 16. And Samson's wife wept before him. Thou dost but hate me, and lovest me not. Thou hast put forth a widow unto, a widow unto my to children of my people, and hast not told it me. And he said to her, Behold, I have not told it my father nor my mother, and shall I tell thee? And she wept before him seven days, while the feast lasted. And it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her, because she lay sore. So it's daily, days, days, daily. Here's Delilah, days. Now it is recorded three times so far that Delilah has done this to Samson and it came to pass when he pressed him daily with her. There's more than three times that the Holy Spirit did not record for us. Samson, get out. Pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. Now he's in trouble. That he told her all his heart and said unto her, There has not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. Well, look at that. He's still a Nazarite, according to him. Though by the law he hasn't been, he's, he's defiled a Nazarite. A Nazarite unto God. He's just going by the razor on his head. It looks like. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like other men. Now the thing is, we come back over here in chapter number 13. Verse 4 to 5. Verse 5. 13, 5. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God. Verse 17 of chapter 16. And he told her all his heart and said, There has not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God. He's not giving his strength to his hair. Though that is a way of the Nazarite, he says, unto God. He is honoring God, Jehovah. He's just got a flesh problem. I will be, uh, will be shaved, then my strength will go from me, and I will become weak and be like any other man. There's one thing you got to say about Samson in Hebrews chapter 11. What is Hebrews 11? It's the faith chapter, correct? Being in chapter 11, Samson has faith and loves the Lord God. It is his sins and his flesh keeps getting in his way, as does anybody who has sinned. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she went, she sent and called the lords of the Philistines. That's the ones in verse 5 said, we'll pay you a thousand pieces of silver each. Eleven hundred pieces of silver each. I don't know who these men have been in her bedchamber, but now she calls the leaders of the Philistines, the lords. 
And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. There is chapter, there is chapter 16, verse 5. Okay, guys, I got him this time. Bring the check. And it better be able to be cashed. And she's telling Samson who, who has the love here? She made him sleep. Ain't gonna do is awake upon her knees. And she called for a man. And she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. I mean, now we're the hair. But doesn't even mention the word hair, locks. Now watch this. Now mark this. And she began to afflict him. He cuts off those seven locks and she's beating him, punching him, and scratching him. She didn't call the men in, as she did from her chamber. She's doing it now. She is beating her lover. And the strength was, went from him. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he woke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before. Uh, no. And shake myself. And he was not. That the Lord Jehovah, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, was departed from him. You mean the Lord's been with him all through this? Absolutely. You can't defy the black and white. At the moment he was shaved, God says, okay, now I'm done with you. So he had to be a Nazarite. The Nazarite vow. Though he sinned. But the Philistines took him. Now this is what sin will do to you. This is be not deceived, God's not marked, whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. And put out his eyes. Um... Uh. In verse 2 of 14 says, I have seen a woman in Timnah. She pleases me well. That's got to be lust of the eyes. Each of these women has to be the lust of the eyes of Samson. And God's like, I, I got to get rid of those eyes. And brought him down to Gaza. In chapter 16, verse 1, he, Samson went to Gaza. He's gone back. And bound him with fetters of brass, handcuffs kind of thing. Brass is judgment in the Bible. He's locked in handcuffs. He's, he's in cuffs somehow, some way. And he did grind. That's work. He was tied to a grinding wheel. He circled around like a donkey or an ox or a cow to grind meal. He has taken the position of an animal. And he doesn't even know where he's going because he's blind. That's a hard judgment. Matthew 5, 29. You know, Jesus spoke the Bible and they didn't even really know it. Matthew 5, 29. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is proper for thee than one eye well, one of thy members should be perished, and, that, and not that thy whole body shall be cast into hell. And better if Samson would get rid of those eyeballs in the mess that he's in now. And he did grind in the prison house. Prison preachers sin, locked in your flesh. Now you get hair. How be it the hair? Now you, this first time ever hair has been mentioned. Except for the locks. 
the, the Malbi, the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. Now this would be weeks or months as hair will start growing back. Then the lords of the Philistines gathered themselves together for to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon. That's the first time Dagon shows up. If you ever want to see Dagon, you look at the Pope sideways with his hat, his mitre. Dagon was a fish god, and the, and the priest of Dagon wore a hat that was a fish head. A fish head that was open. If you were drawing an eyeball on this hat, if you were drawing an eyeball on this hat, you would see a fish with an open mouth. Their God. Not Samson's God. Absolutely not Samson's God at all. This is a foreign God. For they said, Our God has delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hand. It's a poor testimony. It's a poor testimony of a child of God, a child of Israel, a child of, of God to say, the enemy won. Satan won. And when the people saw him, they praised their God. For they said, our God has delivered into our hands our enemy and destroyed our... That, and yeah, and the destroyer of our country, which slew many of us. And it came to pass, when their hearts were merry, that they said, Call for Samson, that he may make a sport. And they called Samson out of the prison house. They called Joseph out of the prison house, but to be lifted up by God. They're calling Samson out of the prison house to make fun of him. And he made them sport. And they set before they set him between the pillars. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand. See this little tiny lad? See this child? Look at he's holding this big, strong man of God. He can do nothing without this little child. Suffer me that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof about three thousand men and women, and that beheld while Samson made sport. In Genesis 26, 8. Genesis 26, verse 8. Genesis 26, verse 8. And it came to pass when he had been there a long time that Abimelech, the king of Philistines, oh, looked out a window and saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting with Rebekah his wife. And Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold of a surety, going back to sporting, she is thy wife. Whatever Isaac and Rebekah sporting, it came to the eyes that you're not brother and sister. Proverbs 10, 23. And yet we have a sports section in our news. Proverbs 10. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 23. Proverbs 10, 23. Written by Solomon. It is as sport. To a fool to do mischief. Oh. It's an activity that shows a, that you're not brother and sister. It's an activity for a fool. Proverbs 26, verse 19. Proverbs 26, 
Barbara's 26 19. Proverbs 26, verse 19. This would be a practical joker, this one. So is a man that deceiveth, first time that word shows up there, his neighbor, and says, am I not, excuse me, am not I in sport? You know, he does a practical joke on somebody. Oh, I'm just sporting. Sport doesn't have any good good classes in the Bible. And last, 2 Peter 2.13. Beware of sports. 2 Peter 2.13. Watch out for the 13. 2 Peter 2.13. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are, and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings, first and last time that word showed up. Notice how deceiving is a word that is that shows up to show up with sport while they feast with you. I'd be careful with sports. Now, what is the sport here in Judges? I guarantee that little boy being there, they're just mocking the size and the shape and all that of Samson and a little boy. It's perversion, that's what I would say. And Samson called unto the Lord, Jehovah, and said, Oh, Lord God, remember me. I pray thee and strengthen me. I think he only prayed earlier. I pray thee only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines from my two eyes. See, they took both the eyes out. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood and in which it was borne up so that entire roof that they're sitting on rests upon these two pillars of the one with his right hand and the other with his left and samson said let me die with the philistines and he bowed himself with all his might and the house fell upon the lords upon all the people that were therein so the dead which he slew at his death were more than that which he slew in his life. About 3,000 men and women. Then his brethren and all the house of the father came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Eshol in the burying place of Manoah, his father. And he judged Israel 20 years. And that's the end of a man of God, by God, promised child of a woman who was barren. And that's the end. It's sad. He had faith in the Lord, but the flesh gave him.